Welcome back. So I am continuing with my watercolor monochromatic landscape. Um, and so I did my first layer in the last video. It is now dry. Um, it didn't take super long to dry. Watercolors go pretty quick. So I'd say probably about 15 minutes. And so now I'm back. Um, even the paint that I already mixed it's still kind of wet in here, so I can still use that, although I'm sure I'll need to mix some more. And I'm just gonna continue building these layers, working towards my darker values, and working towards details. So I have like the main stuff on here, looks kind of messy and crazy <laughs> right now, um, but as I start to get some of these details, I think it's really gonna come together. So another note, I still have that value scale. I took off the tape because it's dry. Um, and then where I'm kind of testing out my colors as I mix them. Um, and of course, I have my reference that I'm using. And so I'm going to be, I know that's off camera, but that's what I'm looking at the whole time as I'm working at those two main things. So now I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna start to build up some of those darker values um, and start to get a little more detailed. So um, I still have my larger brush, if you have a larger brush, if not, your medium brush will work for everything. Um, but to go a little bit quicker, I have that larger brush, and test on my color, it looks fine. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start to identify where some of those darker values are and kind of get those in there. And so it looks like on the edge of some of these mountains, I've got some darker values. And I know some of it has kind of created this texture up here. I don't mind that. I actually really like that, especially when it's in the um, sky or in the water. When I get to the little details, that would bother me. But because I was working on wet with wet, those are areas where I went back and added a little extra water. And that water sometimes does that and then dries that way. If you really don't like it, I can go back and I can just kind of blend it in with a little more water um, and reactivate it on the page, but I don't mind it, so I'm going to keep it. All right, over here, it's really dark, so I actually think I'm going to create an even darker version like I did before of my color by just adding more of that brown. Test it out. That looks good. Um, because I know that I want these areas to be really, really dark. On my reference, it's super dark over here and like on these treescapes. So using a decent amount of pigment, which I can always create more layers on top of it, but I'm going to go ahead and get some really dark edges. Leaving some little white areas. Because like I said, over here on these like mountainous range, it's got a lot of texture. And it's got um, some light areas mixed in there. Um, my picture is pretty complicated. Yours might be simpler. Um, but mine's pretty complicated. There's kind of a shadow down in here in the water. And so I'm going to take that darker area, but then I'm going to blend it out into the water by just adding a little water to my brush and just kind of pulling that out. There's kind of a little mountainous range, darker tree area down here. Um, down in this area, I've got lots of texture happening. And so when I go to apply on those areas of texture, I tend to kind of apply it um, by just pressing on it, creating a little different outcome as I do that. Take a darker area as well. Up here is really dark reflections in the water. So, and those actually have some trees that are pulled down, which I don't want them to be perfect because um, it's in the water. And so 
Like I'm not gonna go back. I'm just instead gonna kind of pull down some of these darker versions. The water over here is actually pretty dark. And then I think I'm gonna go back because this is even darker than I'm giving it credit for. And I might even kind of show you how I can kind of mess up that area a little bit, although I don't really don't mind it. Kind of like creating that texture. All right. So now as this is drying, I actually might just go ahead and get into some more specific spots um, and move on to my smaller brush, which is actually more of like a medium brush, which is probably what you've been using this whole time, unless you just happen to have some extra brushes. Um, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna make some more of this darker pigment because I'm getting towards those details where I really need those darker colors. And so I'm gonna make a bunch of it. Test it out, looks good. And then a trick when I'm getting to like those smaller areas, not only to use a smaller brush if you have that option, um, but also to just clean off your brush and dry it off so it's just damp. And then just get paint on the end of it um, is gonna allow you to get just a small area. Whereas if you mix the whole thing and have your entire brush saturated in that paint, you're more likely to cover a really large area and lose some of the detail. But if I dry off my brush and just apply the paint on the end, um, then I can have a little bit more control. And so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna start to identify some of those smaller details. Um, and so like over here, there's like some texture. This is probably where I would spend the bulk of my time working is on these little details, just starting to build these up, identifying where those really dark spots are. And once again, not doing it perfect, especially if you're dealing with something like a nature scape, it's not gonna be perfect and that's okay. Trying to make sure I'm leaving some of those lighter spots. But I'm really just trying to get some texture in here. That's pretty good to start down there. Um, over here is like the edge by the water. And so up here is where I have some trees. And so I can kind of layer up. And as I'm getting closer, I can start to get like some more defined trees. So I think I'm gonna need more of this pigment. I told you guys, you're gonna get really good at making your color. Test it out, looks good. Clean off my brush so that I just have pigment on the ends. And so when I go to do some of these trees, I'm first just kind of defining them with a line. And as they get closer with my perspective, they're gonna get larger. But I know that these little dark areas over here, they're actually just little trees. So I'm kind of adding just a little bit of texture in this. Notice I'm not doing that down on the water because for the watery area, um, watery, <laughs> for 
the lake area, I want it to all kind of blend together. That's how we know that that's the water. Over here, I have some more defined trees as well. Notice not super defined, but no tree spots. Um, so I'm just kind of building up some of that texture. going through my pigment pretty quickly. Down here, it kind of blends up a little bit, so I can kind of start to do some of that. Try not to lose some of my white areas, because once you lose those, you can't get them back, but also trying to make them not just so obvious that I just like blast some white. get a little more definition in those areas. Make some more of my color. Grab my brush, grab some more. Okay, working some more of these mountains. They seem to be darker, mainly on this side. And so I'm applying more pigment on that side. Always looking back at my reference. Here's kind of the last one, which isn't quite as dark, so I'm going to add a little more water to my brush. And I can always go back and add more to these darker ones. Not a lot of white right there. Kind of give them a little more definition. The more layers of my pigment, um, the darker that value is going to be. And so notice I'm working towards those really, really dark value. And I'm like going over those really, really dark places over and over again, like these tree lines. And just adding more and more to it. The more layers, the more detail, the more intricacy, um, the better value and contrast you're gonna have. And don't forget, this is just a reference. This is not like your photo does not have to be exactly like your final piece. Um, it is your reference to be able to help you get to where you want to be, to get the general um, image that you're trying to portray, but oh, I got a little dot there. We're gonna work that back in. Yeah. Um, but by all means, like if you think that you need a tree somewhere, if you think that you need something that, um, your image is missing, then do it. Or if you accidentally make something, that's okay too. Just make sure that you're building up a nice range of values. You should have really dark areas, lots of medium tones, texture in those lighter areas as well. Darken up this edge again. All right, there is, or there are some trees. I'm making some more pigment um, that are right here that I would like to get back. And so I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of find where those trees would be. And then just kind of work back and forth. This is a good old trick that Bob Ross taught me to create those trees. You don't want any of your trees to be perfect because in reality, 
they are not perfect. So if you were doing a nature scape, good news is it does not need to be exact. Um, but with that, sometimes it's trickier to make branches and things that aren't exact. Um, it's almost easier to like, you know, details and things. It's almost easier to make something look really perfect than to kind of mess it up. So you have to be intentional about messing some of those things up. Um, so I'm going to let this dry. Um, and then I want to go back and I want to deepen this area and just the really dark areas some more. Um, but I think, I think I'm almost done. In fact, while I have you on this video, I might go ahead and make a really dark version of my pigment. So I'm probably going to get more brown. I want it to be super dark. And just go ahead, see if I can get a little bit more out of this. Getting there. I think I'm gonna need to let it dry to get some of these details back though. All right, so my last steps would be let it dry, darken up those main parts some more, um, and then when it's completely dry, I can take off the tape and um, that's it. Have fun with this, take your time. I did this fairly quickly, but also I've done this many times before. So take your time and really get those details in there. Make sure you're referencing your photo and have fun with it. I'll post an image of my final one when I'm all done.